When doing a live production, you may want to see what's on another computer or maybe even browse the web while you're recording. Let me show you how to do that inside of Wirecast. Let's go ahead and create a new layer and I'm going to show you a couple of different options. This first option is called screen capture. What screen capture will allow you to do is capture what you see on the screen. In this case, I have two monitors. This monitor is acting as a secondary monitor for this monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and call this monitor 2. We have a couple of options. We can either capture the entire monitor or a window or game. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Let's say that I want to capture a window. I can click window and I can come over here and I can select which window or monitor I want to capture. I can come up here, it has a couple of different windows. I'm going to choose Google Chrome, which I have open on the other monitor. I have NASA inside of that browser, so I can go ahead and select OK. This fills up the screen. But if my window is not the same size or aspect ratio of the screen, it's only going to fill in the size of the window. To fix that, you can either make your window full size or you can also switch to capture the entire monitor, not just the window. I'm going to go ahead and select this shot and I'm going to change its settings by clicking on these three dots here and I can change the capture type from window to the entire monitor. And what that will do, that has cleared out my secondary monitor and has captured my primary monitor. So let me click on configure and I'm going to choose the secondary monitor again. Now I do that and it doesn't matter what I do on this monitor, I could shrink the window size and you can see you can still see the entire monitor. The window is just showing up inside of that screen. So I can surf the web, I can do a demonstration. Let's say that you would also like to have a website inside of your broadcast. Maybe somebody is not going to be uh, clicking on it and changing it. You just want people to see the website. We can add in a static website by clicking on the plus sign, going down, and selecting Web Display. From here, I'm going to go ahead and either create a new one or choose an existing one. Let's say we want to have the National Park Service. We can type in the website's address. We click OK. Notice the size of our width and our video height. Shut down when not live. I like to keep it on all the time so I can see what it is. This will actually blank it out when it's not used. But I'm going to go ahead and select this. I click on here and I notice that it didn't save the address. So what I want to do is I select my shot and come over here to change its settings and I'm going to change it to www.nps.gov. This is the problem of having a static website that you can't control what you see. You simply go to that website. So now if we come over here, we can see that this does not fill up the entire screen. If we want this to fill up the entire screen, I'm going to go ahead and change the size of my website to be 1920 by 1080. Now when I change the size, it still doesn't fill the frame. So what I want to do is now I click on the settings and I click scale to fit. And now it fills up the frame. This will allow you to see the entire website uh, while you're going. The problem with this is as you can see, I cannot control this website. So if a pop-up happens or if something's on the website, there's nothing I can do about it. This is if you want a static website to be shown in your broadcast. Let me show you another way that you can get a screen on here. In this case, we are limited because we cannot control this web page. If we had another computer that we could control the web page and you could see what was happening, that would be great. Or if somebody was giving a presentation, we could actually see exactly what's on their computer so that we don't just get limited with a static web page. To bring in what's on somebody else's computer, we're going to click plus. 
and we're going to go to Remote Desktop Presenter. This allows us to connect to a remote computer. I'm going to give it a name, and it's asking for an IP address on the computer that you want to send the signal from the monitor to the computer. You have to download a software called Telestream Desktop Presenter. It's a free download. You simply download it and install it on your computer. When you open it up, it will give you this option on the presenter computer. You can choose the source. In this case, I'm choosing the monitor. You can choose either the full screen. You can have a certain size. I'm going to go ahead and do full screen. You can have the option to capture audio. I'm going to turn that off because it's not necessary. Then it gives you the TCP IP address that you're going to insert in to Wirecast. And when you do that, simply click Apply. And once you've done that, you can see what's on this monitor shows up inside of Wirecast. I'm going to click OK. It's going to take it a moment to load. And once it's loaded, you can see I have this shot inside of Wirecast. I can come in and I can move things around and you can see what's happening on the screen as I do it. For example, if I wanted to do my presentation, I could come in here and I could show off my presentation. And my presentation is going to show up on my computer as well as show up inside of Wirecast. So this way you can control what is being shown on your screen in Wirecast from the remote computer. So these are three different ways that you can get another screen or another window into Wirecast. The first way, just to review, is you can have an external monitor and you can control what's going on here. This adds more work to the person behind the control panel, but if you're on a limited crew, a small number, this will help. The second option is to simply have a static link to a website where you just see what's on the website. And the third option is to install Desktop Presenter on a remote computer, and whatever that computer shows comes into Wirecast. Hopefully this will help you make more professional Wirecast productions